Hi everybody, welcome back. So um, you just heard me playing um, Wild Things Run Fast by Joni Mitchell. And uh, that's from the, the title track from the album that came out in 1982. Features Steve Lukather on guitar, along with Vinnie Colaiuta and Larry Klein, and also on keys, um, it's Larry Williams. Um, so yeah, 81, 82 was a pretty prolific year for Lukather. He played on a lot of quite big records. Toto released Toto 4. He played on Thriller by Michael Jackson. He played on If That's What It Takes by Michael McDonald. He played on uh, Physical by Olivia Newton-John. He also played on the, um, the album by The Tubes, which has a very long name, which I've forgotten now. That came in 81. Um, but yeah, it was a prolific time for him. So anyway, I've seen another video somewhere about this track, and it's been attributed to Mike Landau. But Lando does play on the other tracks on the album and he played in Joni Mitchell's live band that came after this album so I think there was a bit of confusion there because on the liner notes it definitely says it's Steve Lukather and on closer listening I really think it is Steve Lukather. Anyway this is a great track um, it's basically like a power it's basically like a power trio accompanying Joni Mitchell in her first foray into sort of more more rock kind of setting. Um, so what's going on? Um, he opens the, the, the track up by playing this um, little lick here. One, two, three, four. So that's like a sequence. He plays the same thing four bars later, but actually down a tone. And what, what's going on harmonically is that he's basically playing like a sort of an, a, an E flat idea, but the bass is playing um, an A flat, so you get that kind of sound. And then he goes to a B flat chord, which is over an E flat. And then the same thing happens, it's, G, it's D flat over G flat. And then goes to this D flat five with the, with a big crescendo through that. Um, Okay, so yeah, that's basically what's going on there. Um, after that, we get into the actual verse, and he plays this um, nice little thing. He's using a volume pedal. I suppose maybe I should talk about tone here. Um, the, the guitar tone isn't massively dirty. Um, I'm using um, a Plexi model on the Axe 8 here, but I've got my volume pedal in front of it so that I can clean it up. Like that, you see, because that's what, what he'd he's done on this track. I don't know what amp he would have been playing through. He did use um, a modified, a Rivera modified Deluxe for um, for a lot of his sessions. It might be that he was playing through that because it's, you know, it's not massively dirty, but I find that the Marshall characteristic seems to, seems to be coming through there. I don't know. He's also using probably a tri-chorus, the original songbird thing from back in the day. I added chorus in Logic. It's just the standard chorus plug-in on the mega wide setting which I've just toned down a bit. Okay, so um, yeah, verse. What we're doing is kind of like having like a, a little C sus2 triad and then you just turn that up a bit. and he hammers on and that's the first four bars. Fifth bar it goes to well, he plays like a C arpeggio, landing on an F, so it's like a C over F, F major ninth chord. And then after we get this sort of little um, double stop thing in thirds, three, four. And... So you know, it's, it's all, all in one position. Um, he then goes up and plays like an E flat power chord over the A flat bass, and it goes one, two, three, four, then B flat five, and then F five, sort of. It's a B flat in the bass. It's almost like he's playing, um, yeah, he plays these, basically these power chord things with different root notes again. This is like the intro. E flat over A flat, and then he plays B flat, and then this, kind of a B flat sus2 thing. I'm wondering whether there's sometimes occasional notes coming in there as well. It's kind of hard with the distortion. It sometimes clouds, and also what's going on in the vocal harmonies, it sort of clouds exactly what he's playing. Um, 
Yeah. And then the, the verse repeats exactly the same thing. There's subtle variations here and there. Um, and then and then into the ver uh, sorry, and then into the bridge, we get this thing where he's playing arpeggios, major arpeggios over the root notes that are now these kind of steely down chords, if you like. So this is the now F over B flat, and he plays one. And he takes it down to C. And then a, uh, E flat. Okay, so all of those are over the root notes that's a fourth above. So you get the effect of that chord followed by that C over F and then E flat over A flat. And then you get B flat over E flat. But he plays this interesting thing where he goes. So it's using all six strings, which is weird to be playing that low. But then he plays his next chord, which is even lower. He plays an F major 7, 6, 9, and he voices it like this. Fretted first fret F, open A, open D, open G, C, open E. So what you get is a big stack of fourths in the middle, middle of it, which makes it sound quite, quite jazzy. Before going back to the that business there. He goes back and then plays the verse playing similar things again. Again, a little bit of subtle variation. The outro is just a loop of this. So it's all around C, little melodic phrases. So, you know, right towards the end, he's doing that. Three, four, one. Um, again, you can let the notes blur over. As I mean, he's, he lets a lot of these notes blur over when he's doing those little hammer-ons. Um, it's harder to play if you do that. Um, I didn't. I didn't in my version that I recorded. I didn't get every one of those things in. But um, there are only so many hours in the day <laughs> to, to work on these minute details. Um, Final chord that he plays is an interesting one. You get this. And it's stacked up an A, D, and G, which is, an, and this is kind of C in the bass with some bass movement, but it's almost like he's playing like a, a C6-9 chord. He just lets that overhang over the outro where it goes all quiet. And then the final chord that he plays up here is the same, same voicing, but just up the octave. Just that. And there's the delay on the end, um, again. I didn't go as far as trying to do the modulation on the delay because there are so many hours in the day. Okay, so um, yeah, I hope that's uh, been a nice little uh, breakdown of this track. Um, you can really hear that it's a live performance, which gives it the energy. Um, I did a sort of a MIDI map, sorry, I did a tempo map of this. And the tempo moves around quite a lot, but you can really feel the... Um, the energy in the performance, especially in the in the sort of outro, you could, it's, you can actually hear that Lukather is slightly getting behind the, the the drums. They're pushing really, you know, pushing forward a bit. And this section that he plays here, um, it's almost like he plays it as a swung quaver because he's like struggling to keep up. I mean, he's not struggling to keep up, but you can just feel there's a sort of a level of intensity there. It almost goes a bit ragged, um, which is. Fine, because I think it gives so much more of a vibe to the tune. We live in an era where everything is airbrushed now to the point where every minute, uh, you know, inconsistency is is removed. You know, everything's to click, everything's on the grid. Um, and I, I used to think that was a good way of working. And it is a good way of working. We should all aim for perfection as best we can. But we are human and those little imperfections are what make the um, performance have a certain emotional connection, I think. Right. I'll see you soon, guys. Take care. Oh, one other thing to add before you, before I go is I am intending to put some of these, make some of my backing tracks available along with some PDFs and transcriptions. It's a very time-consuming business, so it might take me a while to do this um, But I, because I need to extend some of the tracks and also improve the production on some of them, like drum programming and things like that. But keep, your, keep an eye open for that, and um, I'll let you know when that uh, starts to be released. Okay, see you soon guys.